hip-hop icon and famous Hot 97 DJ Mr. C found himself in the middle of yet another prostitution scandal this week when a video circulated online of him soliciting sex from what he thought was a cross-dressing prostitute, to use his language. Yesterday, Mr. C stepped down from his position at Hot 95. Check this out. I, I've just, I feel like I let so many people down. Hold up. I just... I just feel I let a lot of y'all up here down, man. And it, and I, I I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart, man, for you to say, yo, you don't have to resign. There's a place for me up here. But I have to think I have to think about that, man. I I have to I have to think about it. And I know me, it may sound stupid goodbye to anybody be like, yo, you back on the box. Get back on the let's box. Go. Let's go. But I have to I have to think about it because, look, you know, like today I'm I'm being I'm being honest, man. I'm I'm talking about who I am and what I am, you know, and so I got to deal with that first before I can get to the br the bridge that I know that, that I love, which is being on this radio. Today, Mr. C admitted to soliciting sex, but what does any of this mean? What does it all say about being gay, queer, or questioning in hip hop and the broader black community? I think there are a lot of well-meaning people that wanted to offer Mr. C some support, but I also feel like there's a, there's a lot of people saying, you know, oh, you know, don't be afraid to be yourself. You know, you you can you can be yourself. You know, we we love you, Mr. C. All this and and I think what we have to pay attention is to C's words himself, right? So like yesterday he tweeted that he felt, you know, maybe he was better off dead, right? And then this morning we, we hear him on the on the radio and he's just so emotional and they're, they're offering him his spot back and or, you know, saying you don't have to resign, but he felt like, you know, I, he, he has to be somewhere else so that he could do, he could be himself. So he can't be himself in the space that he was in. So we have to look at, you know, and stop saying, you know, don't be afraid to be yourself and look at ourselves and our community and say, why are you afraid to be yourself? Why is it that you feel like you have to to hide this from us? Why do we why do we feel like it's any of our business? Why do we feel such a, you know, why is our community so hostile to, you know, your your identity or your sexual behavior or what have you? Why why do we make such a hostile space for you to live in? And I think that's what, you know, for me, I mean, there were a lot of well-meaning people, but I think we have to start questioning our community and ourselves more and our ideas. We were talking about him as if he had committed a high crime. I mean, there was more conversation and outrage about this, I found, than Rick Ross rapping about date rape. I mean, it, it was stunning to me. We were talking about this as if he had killed somebody. It's so interesting how the patho it gets pathologized, right? A man chooses to have intercourse or some kind of sexual or sexual activity <laughs> with a trans woman, right? right. It, we're not, you know, me and Laverne always talk about this, we're not supposed to be here, right? And so men are not supposed to love us because we're not supposed to exist. Hmm. And so what does that say that a man chooses to do it in secret, to hide it? What is the idea of realness when we're talking about hip hop, when we're talking about all kinds of culture, um, our culture? And it's what's bothering for me is that what is the message that it sends to trans women about their identities, how it stigmatizes them, how it demeans them, and how it further pushes them into darkness. And most of the, these conversations are not about trans women, but it is about trans women. We don't have language to describe men who are attracted to trans women, right? right. Um, if I'm a woman and you are a man and you're attracted to me, most guys identify as straight. And why can't we accept that? I think, again, when we, we, there is a denial of, of the womanhood of trans women that ha that's happening in any conversation that suggests that a man who's attracted to a trans woman right. is gay, there is a, di a disavowal of my identity and my womanhood. We have lack of available language, particularly in our community, to discuss these particular dynamics of identity. And, and it, it speaks on some level to how unserious we are in terms of dealing with these issues within our community. Could you imagine any of us being engaged in a conversation about race and, and listening to, you know, uh, Breeze on that interview say, you know, there's too many categories. I don't know what to say and how to say it. <laughs> we, we would never say that about race, right? Because we're clear cut about the language that we need to use to address these issues within our community. We're not as clear cut when it comes to issues of gender and sexuality and we don't take it seriously enough to actually develop a language for us to be able to talk thoughtfully and lovingly about folks who are in our community.
hip hop in some ways is a microcosm of what we see as a larger society, particularly around issues of gender and sexuality and, and identity. I think part of the struggle that we need to be very honest that desire, however that desire is manifested, is a perfectly normal emotion, right? We desire to have all kinds of peoples within our life, and there's nothing strange and oppositional about desire for trans women. It is perfectly normal as desire is across all kind of gender identity. And if we can fundamentally admit that, you know, because the other part of that is that we live in a in a society that doesn't have healthy ideas about sex in the first place. So if sex is seen as something that is strange and oppositional, you know, everything that kind of pivots from that is uh, is is thought about in that context within our society. And so I think we have a long way to go in terms of having the kind of fruitful and loving conversations that we need to have.